Okay. Today is Sunday, 4th of February, 2018. We will be reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. Luke chapter 5, from verse 16 to 26. Luke 5, 16 to 26. And it reads, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the, the uh, tilings into the mist before Jesus. When he saw their faith, Jesus said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth, to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I said to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately, he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Verse 26, And they were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus that we will see strange things today. Father, I declare that we will hear strange things today. Father, I declare that we will experience strange things today. And Father, not just today, but all the days of our lives. Father, because we have chosen to seek your face, we have chosen to live in your presence. Father, we will live in the supernatural and we will always experience strange things. We will always hear strange things. We will always see strange things and we will live by strange things. Lord, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so you are all welcome to the service of today. And as we might have gathered, the title is God Does Strange Things. Amen? God Does Strange Things. That is what we are dealing with today. God does strange things. But only a few people actually know it or experience it or live by it. Because he does strange things strange things to those he loves yeah he does strange things for those who love him and he does strange things for his friends those who are close to him who seek him who seek his presence who seek his will who seek to do according those who are called according to his purposes those are the people that actually know that god does strange strange things and who actually experience the strange things that God does. It, it will not always fit our political correct uh, mindset. You will only see it, know it, live by it when you shift out of the politically correct society and, and choose to live a strange life. Amen? Okay. So, 
are we willing to live that kind of life according to God's purpose? That's the question. Are we willing to live our lives according to God's strange plans and purposes? If we are ready to walk according to his will and plan and purpose, then we will surely experience those strange things. That, that should be our daily walk. People should see us and ask, how are they doing it? That our life should be a testimony to the world. So in this church, we have agreed that this year is our year of the supernatural. We have, we have been going higher. We have been seeking the face of the Lord. More than last year, we want to know more. More than the year before that, we want to know more. We want to go higher. So we claim that this year is a year of the supernatural. We will know this year what we did not know last year and what we did not know the years before because we have set our minds to know those things. We ask God, like it says in, in Job 34, 32, teach me to see those things that I don't know. Teach me, teach me to see what I don't know. So we have set our minds on Jesus and we say, Lord, we are just taking baby steps. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Help us to know what you want us to know. And we can be sure of this because God has already, we wouldn't even have this mindset if we were not predestined for it. Ephesians 1, 5 to 7 tells us that we have been accepted in the beloved. So we are not even struggling to do it. We are just positioning ourselves to do it. Amen. We have been accepted in the beloved. Ephesians, I'm just shortening it. If you read Ephesians 1, 5 to 7, you will get the full picture. God has already predestined us to adoption as sons by his son, Jesus Christ. So God has chosen us for himself and, and we are his adopted children through Christ, in Christ, with Christ. We have already been blessed by his acceptance of us in his beloved son, Jesus Christ. So what we are doing when we say we are setting our faces, we are looking up to Jesus. We are doing it with joy. We are doing it with, with expectation, with with. A, 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 a lively spirit we are doing it it's not it's not something we struggle to do we just flow in it we position ourselves to receive instructions from the holy spirit so to this end we are god's friends yeah because we choose him to this end we are god's children we are co-heirs with jesus christ and we are God's mouthpiece. So when we look at his face, we look at his lips, when he speaks, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So when we listen to him, we will speak what we hear him speak. We will do what he tells us and we will live accordingly. How can you have a normal life when the God that created the whole earth is walking through you he is too much that's why david says he anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over you you have to run over there, there's no way you can put god in you and you remain the same imagine you are a, a glass of maybe 250 mils and god is a is 20 gallons of i mean how can you fill 20 gallons into one glass you have to overflow. So that is who we are in God. If he lives in us, we must overflow. And people have to see that overflow. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. We have to live a life that overflows at all times. Because we cannot. You read about all the prophets like you know john the revelator or gabriel or whoever in the presence of god you 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 can't stand people who say oh you know 
pastors will wave their hand and people fall, it's all fake. You go and stand there and see how fake it is. If the presence of God is on you, let me see how you are going to stand. Yes, God knows who we are. And, and like I said, he does it for those who love him, those whom he, he, he loves, those who are predestined. So what I experience, a non-believer may not experience because they have already blocked it out. They have blocked themselves out because they are, they are, they are not open to the supernatural. They are already criticizing the supernatural. So how can you receive? So, so because we, have, we are God's friends and God's children and God's mouthpiece, that means we have the ability to overturn things. Remember what he told young Jeremiah when he called Jeremiah? Jeremiah said, how can you call me? I'm a child. I don't even know how to speak. He says, you can't say that. It, you, are, you are just a vessel that I'm going to walk through. I give you authority to uproot and to build. This was a child, a young boy. I give you, because when you uproot and you build, it's me doing it through you. Just let, you know, loosen yourself up and let me use you. That means we have the ability to reverse curses, to, to do things. We, we have the ability to, to cause mountains to move, like Jesus taught his, his disciples. This is us living in the supernatural. These are evidence. We have been predestined to rule and reign with God. So when we walk into these things, these strange things, we have to remember it's not me doing it. It is the God Almighty in me that is doing it. Okay? So with God, all things are possible. With God. So that means when we agree to live and walk with God according to his plans and purposes, then we have the ability to do strange things. Because with God, in partnership with him, God will not do it alone. He needs us. He needs our vessels so that he can manifest. So that these strange things can start to happen in our lives. Last week, we saw how Jesus prayed up a storm. And that storm carried him. His normal was the supernatural. So that's what we are trying to emulate. Our normal should be the supernatural. And that means spending time with Jesus. That's how he did it, according to what we just read now. You know, Luke chapter 5, verse 16. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness to pray. That's what we saw last week. He wanted to go. Then the people intercepted him. He said, okay. He ministered to them, fed them, and then he dismissed everybody and went up to pray. And then, that's what we are reading again today in, in Luke. So he himself often, often withdrew just by himself. He withdrew often into the wilderness and prayed. That is how you invoke the supernatural. That is how Jesus did it and showed us the example. He never allowed his ministry to make him too tired for prayers. He refused to do anything without first talking with daddy. May we never be too tired to seek the face of the Father in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. we, will be, we will seek his face because that is how we can do those strange things. When the going gets tough, when we are tired from our daily businesses, from our jobs, from school, from anything that we do, when the going gets tough, the saying says that the tough gets going. And we are not tough in ourselves. 
If the tough of the world gets going, we are tougher by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is how we will see strange things. And that is how we will live in the supernatural. So let us continue to look at what we, we, we read. Luke chapter 5, now verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day. I want you guys to catch that. It is not every day. Jesus has been going out preaching. Jesus has been going out teaching. But this was a certain day. It happened on a certain day. You are, your blessing will come on a certain day in the name of Jesus. Your breakthrough will come on a certain day in the name of Jesus. It may happen for others. Don't look at it. Keep focusing on Jesus because your certain day is coming in the name of Jesus. It happened on a certain day as he was teaching. You see, it wasn't even that he was out there ministering. He was teaching. He was seated in, in somebody's house teaching. So don't, don't start saying, oh, it, it's only crusade. It's only this, it's only that. No, your certain day will come as long as you focus on the Father. Because when his time comes, he will say, now is the time. As he was teaching. So he's there teaching. And there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by. Who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem. See, these are the people. Some came. <laughs> it's funny. People of all sorts came out from all walks of life those who loved him those who liked him those who were just curious about him and even those who hated him they were all there they came out of every nook and cranny of, of, of the place every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem they came and he was there just teaching them. And what does the next line say? Of verse, the last statement in verse 17. And the power of the Lord was present to heal. I don't know if you guys see how loaded that verse 17 is. On a certain day, Jesus was just teaching. And then all these Pharisees and, and Sadducees and, and scribes and whatever, all kinds of people, all walks of life, the good, the ugly, the beautiful, and the works, they all came. Some to criticize, some to clap, some to whatever, you know, all works. And he says, as he was teaching, the power of the Lord was present to heal. And you can put anything in that healing. When the presence of God comes, strange things will happen, guys. Strange things will happen. The power of the Lord was present to heal. Heal your finance. Heal your physical ailment, heal your mind, heal your situation, whatever. When the presence of the Lord comes, he can do anything. That's why we are talking about strange things today. Now verse 18. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. Verse 19, just listen. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, 
they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the mist before Jesus. What does that tell me? And what does that tell you? Strategic prayers. Strategy in seeking God. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let any barrier stop you, be it human barrier or whatever kind of barrier or obstruction. Don't let the roof stop you. Don't let the Pharisees who are there to criticize stop you. Strategy. Set your face on God and God alone. Why did they could have missed? Don't forget, Jesus was down sitting somewhere teaching and they were on the roof. They could have missed to, to dig the proper place. But they were strategic. They dug exactly the place where they could drop the sick person in front of Jesus. That is strategy. Don't just pray anyhow. Choose your battle plan. Work with strategy and don't let anything, don't let anything confuse you, don't let anything obstruct you, don't let any obstruction stop you. Release your prayer while the power of the Lord is present to take care of your need. That strategy. You don't pray for everything at every time. When you pray strategically, you will be able to discern the spirit and you'll be able to know which prayer to pray then. So that you can release your prayer strategically as well. When you see, when you know that the power of the Lord is present. And that issue will be taken care of. Do not look at anybody's face when you are groaning. When something is hurting you, don't play cool. Go down on your knees, fall on your face, pound the ground and say, Lord, I, I know that you are here and I need your help. If I could do it by myself, I would, have go, I would have gone out to do it, Lord. But I know that you are the only one who can help me out of this situation. So I am facing you. I am looking up to you. And I will not go until you bless me. That's knowing the presence, knowing the, the timing. Discerning when the presence of God, the power of God is present to heal. When you are focused in your prayer, you will receive your breakthrough, you will receive your deliverance, you will receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Because that's what happened here. We don't just have these things to, to read and, and enjoy, we have to live by it. We have to, to ask ourselves, what does this mean? And dig into it. To this, this paralyzed person's friends were strategic. That guy was too, too, too weak to do anything for himself. So it's not just you. That's why God says where two or three agree. When you are weak, then I'm strong. When I'm weak, then you are strong. And we stand with each other. And we fight through. That, that paralyzed person did not do anything for himself. It was his friend that did everything for him. They dug the roof. They, you know, lowered him down in front of Jesus. We have to, to be focused if we want to live this supernatural life. If we want these strange things to happen to us. 
So when these friends have done this, verse 20 says, when Jesus saw, he didn't say his faith. Read, I don't know what your Bible says, but my Bible says when he saw their faith. Luke chapter 5, verse 20. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, when he saw their faith, he said to him, the paralyzed person, Man, your sins are forgiven you. It wasn't his faith. It was their faith. That's working together strategically. So now Jesus is saying to the man, you know, your friends have fought the way through for you. Your sins are forgiven. Go. What happens immediately? The, the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason. Stop reasoning when Jesus is talking to you. Stop reasoning. Switch off your brain when you are in the presence of Jesus because strange things are going to happen that your mind will not be able to, to comprehend. Listen only to Jesus. Agree with his word. Agree with his strategy. Agree with his plans and purpose. That's not what the Pharisees did. You and I, we will always have Pharisees in our lives. Jesus is saying, you are blessed. A Pharisee will stand up, mm, who told you you are blessed? Look at where your father stopped. Look at where your mother stopped. Look at your, your background. Look at your situation. Look, you, you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have that. Pharisees, they start to reason. I'm not living according to my means. I'm living a supernatural life. What's your problem? Beware of the Pharisees. Hypocrites. Because they don't understand, they don't want you to understand. That's why Jesus called them blind, the blind, leading the blind. The Pharisees began to reason and saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? The demons were seeing Jesus and calling him Messiah. And they were studying the, the, the scriptures. They did not know that Jesus was the Messiah. Blind. Confusing you from receiving your own blessing. Who can forgive sin but God? Demons knew Jesus was God. But they did not. Demons will scream when Jesus comes. They didn't even learn from that. They were only there to criticize, to reason with human brain. Verse 22. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, I'm God, I can do it anyhow I like. What's easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, rise up and walk? I can do both. But I chose to do it the other way. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. I had to say it so that you may know it. And then he said to the man, who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. You see what the Pharisees did there? Even right in front of Jesus, they delayed that man's blessing. Even if, even if it's two minutes, they used to argue. That two minutes, that man could have been walking already. That's what the Pharisee will do to you. 
I don't want to stretch it. Let's just imagine it was just two minutes. From the moment Jesus said, man, your sins are forgiven you. That guy could have got up. But immediately the enemy came in through the mouth of the Pharisees. Mm, who is this? How can he say that? He's blaspheming. That man was still lying down there. Right in front of Jesus, they delayed that man's blessing. Even if it, it was for two minutes. This, it still delayed. Don't listen to human reasoning when you want to walk in the supernatural. Listen to Jesus alone. He is the author and finisher. He can do it however he likes to do it. God is not man. His ways are different. That's what we should know from day one. His ways are different and his plans are perfect. However he wants to do it, the end result is perfect. Don't let the Pharisees of your life delay your blessing because of human reasoning. So that Jesus will now have to start to explain. If you hear what Jesus says, stand up immediately and do it. Don't let your moment pass you. Imagine Jesus was walking, he's passing, and he just said to that man, rise up and walk, rise up and walk, rise up and walk, and he was just going. And then his friends are saying, no, they didn't mean you. You have seen too much. You are not worthy. Blah, blah, blah. That guy would stay there. Even when Jesus had said, rise up and walk. Oh, don't you see there are many people here. They didn't mean you. Jesus didn't mean you. He just said it and he passed. Don't listen to human reasoning. Switch off your brain when you are in the presence of Jesus. Because your brain is too hazy, too clouded, too useless at that moment. So this man, thankfully, Jesus kept his patience. And he told him, don't even listen to them. Carry your thing and go. And verse 25 says, immediately the guy rose up before all of them who were, who were trying to, to stop his, his miraculous blessing, his miraculous healing. In front of all of them, he took up what he had been lying on and departed to his own house glorifying God. And then verse 26 and they were all amazed. Ah, finally. Finally. They were all amazed. Even when it says all in me. Describe the Pharisees, all of them. And they glorified God. And were filled with fear or awe. Saying, ah, we have seen strange things today. Are you ready to see strange things in your life? Just believe in what Jesus says. Don't try to reason. Don't try to reason. We are yet to see even stranger things in this our generation because that is what Jesus has spoken. He says greater things you will do because we have his spirit in us. And we are now unlimited. He is now unlimited on earth. Not like when he was physically on earth uh, 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 in, in, you know, over 2,000 years ago. Now he is unlimited by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So we have to prepare our minds to see even stranger things. This is our generation. 
we have to live that supernatural life because that is the promise of Jesus for us. And he's not man to lie. He's not saying it so that you love him more. No. Take it or leave it. It's your cup of tea. So as God's beloved children who have been accepted in the beloved, we have the ability to speak, to declare, and to receive in the name of Jesus. It's not by might or power. So don't reason. You are not the one doing it. All you are doing is to say yes to what Jesus says yes to. Speak it, declare it, receive it, and say thank you Jesus and go. Let, let others stay there and, and be envious. You are God's choice. You didn't choose yourself. God chose you. So just enjoy it and be, and be grateful to him. We have the power and the ability to overturn things. When we are God's friends. When we walk alongside with the Holy Spirit. We, we talked about Joseph a few weeks ago as well. And how Jacob bless his children before he died. Remember he cursed Reuben because Reuben had gone to sleep with one of his concubines in, in Genesis chapter 49 if you want to check. We have to hurry now. But I just want to make a point so that we know. Genesis 49 verse 4 he's talking to Reuben Unstable as water, you shall not excel. That's a curse. Because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. So that's how Jacob put a curse on his son Reuben. And even on Simeon and Levi. Instruments of cruelty in their dwelling. Let not my soul enter their counsel. So I don't want to have any part in them. Let not my honor be united to the assembly. For in their anger they slew a man. You see? So what happened? That's Genesis 49. Go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33. Verse 6. This is Moses. We read from verse 1. It says, Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. So read verse 6. Let Reuben live and not die. Nor let his men be few. What did Moses do? He reversed Joseph's curse. That's the power you and I have when you are a friend of God. Somebody speaks nonsense about you, cancel it in the name of Jesus. Years later, the father who had authority had spoken a curse. But a friend of God came and said, no, it shall not be. I reverse it in Jesus' name. He reinstated Reuben and he reinstated Levi. Even God himself, think of this. God himself rejected Ishmael. God, God himself. Because, you know, he never wanted Abraham to have a child of the flesh. God himself rejected Ishmael. But because of Abraham's intercession, he told God, but he is still my flesh. You need to bless him. <laughs> God did it. 
That's power. We need to learn to pray. We need to learn to pray and overturn things. We need to speak and believe it and receive it. We are learning, yes. But that's why we are reading this and studying it. God said the sun will rise up at such a time and will say, one day Joshua said, sun stand still. Elijah said, no rain. When you are a friend of God, you are God. The only thing you have to do it in obedience, in reverence, in love, in respect. Don't go and call down fire when you don't need to call down fire. Listen to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to Luke. This time, let's look at Luke chapter 10. So I can round up. Luke chapter 10. Verse 17. I read it down. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. This was before the resurrection. Jesus was still alive on earth physically. But in his name, the, the, the disciples came back and said, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, ha, you guys, you have not seen anything yet. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That is the ultimate goal. Not in what we do here on earth. This is just by the way. And verse 21, in that hour, Jesus himself rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. God doesn't do it your way. He does it how he see, it seems good in his sight. And that is always perfect. I don't care how he comes. The result is perfect. Verse 22, Luke chapter 10. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. So it is by revelation, all these things we are talking about. Stop reasoning, is not head knowledge. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately. You see, that's where you get the truth. Privately. Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. And to hear what you hear and have not heard it. We have seen strange things today. In the presence of Jesus, strange things must happen. And we, we have to learn to stop reasoning. 
and we have to learn to thank God for every strange thing like Jesus just did. When the disciples came back and told him what happened, he said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. That's all. Let us pray. Thank you. We thank you, God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit for giving us the ability, the privilege to walk with you, to see some strange things that others only desire to dream of. We thank you, Father, today for teaching us to see even those things that are beyond us. We thank you, Father, that with your eyes we shall always see strange things. We shall always see things in the supernatural. And what we can see, we know we can receive. Because what you are ready to do for us, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has been able to conceive. So my Lord and my God, we pray today, Open our eyes to see the supernatural. Open our eyes to see strange things. Not just today, but all the days of our lives. So that we will live to honor, to worship, to glorify you. Because that is your purpose for us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.